Hello everybody and welcome to the Fleming Film Show. I'm Robbie Fleming and today we are talking about the Coen Brothers to celebrate the release of Macbeth and joining me as always is Justin Doyle. Hello Justin. Hey what's up Rob? Yeah the tragedy of Macbeth is coming out soon. Uh, Cohen will want half a Cohen brother right? Um, yes because he puts left to do a uh, theatre sadly. Yeah well that's all right. Um, I'm sure we're still going to get a great movie uh, and you know, it's going to be different, different styling, I think, than what we normally see from uh, from the dual Coen brothers. Yes, yes, definitely, because they have a very different style, because their style is mainly relies on dark humor. And that's what I like about their, their style. Sweet. Yeah, they have yeah that very dark humor, which we'll definitely talk about uh, in these movies. Um, yeah, we're just going to be ranking our... Uh, our top five favorite um, Coen Brothers movies. Yes, because we could rank all their movies from weakest to best. We'll be here all day. Yes, and I haven't seen them all. And um, yeah, uh, there's there's a few I still haven't seen. Plus, um, for Cody's uh, uh, channel, we're going to be doing some Coen Brothers talk. So I'll be watching Miller's Crossing for, for that. Nice, nice. I've chosen to do Fargo and Burn after reading. Smart. Uh, okay, shall we kick it off? Yes, would you like to go first, Justin? Yeah, I'll go first. You know, let's get the disappointments out of the way first. <laughs> uh, this movie, um, this movie snuck up on people. This one, uh, it did have some Oscar contention. It was up for some awards and uh didn't win any, but um, was up for a couple of them. This movie stars. Uh, we got some. We got some insights into some new stars when it comes to this movie. Uh, one of them being somebody who we know and love today, Adam Driver, but also Oscar Isaac and uh, someone we already knew, Carrie Mulligan and Justin Timberlake. This movie is called Inside Lou and Davis. And it really was just like a sleeper hit. It had, it's it's not a musical, but it definitely has that musical sort of tendencies to it, you know, because it's not, they're not singing every single word or whatever. But, you know, he plays guitar and he likes this little folk music. Um, we also have Garrett Hedlund in this and uh, John Goodman. And I just really enjoyed Oscar Isaac in this movie. What a soft performance, but also, you know, it was really, it really meant something. Like, everyone really enjoyed Lewin Davis. Um, and plus, Adam Driver with the, oh, 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 no. Like, that song, uh, Please, Mr. Kennedy, was such a hit, actually. It was on the radio. Uh, and that was also really interesting. Um, but it, yeah, I just really like this movie because it's super simple. It's just about a man and his guitar and his cat, and he just wants to be, you know, he just wants to sing. Um, but like I said, Adam Driver, Oscar Isaac, you know, those are people, and Garrett Hedlund, actually, those are people who are good actors that we like now. And uh, this is sort of their little introduction into it. So my number five is Inside Lewin Davis. Very good choice. Very good choice. Would we'll definitely be in the top 10, but didn't make this list because i feel like it doesn't stand out as much as the my top five does but it's a very impressive movie i think it was my introduction to oscar isaac as well yeah yeah and what is what a great introduction i mean for i i can only hope that i'm in a movie you know for my introduction uh as an actor uh, to the world i hope mine can be something like this where people are like you know really take notice for for a really good film Yes, yes, and I'm glad that it was the Coen brothers who pushed him into becoming a good actor. Absolutely. You ready for my number five? Yes, let's one let's you it. have just mentioned, it's Miller's Crossing. I mainly prefer <laughs> their comedy movies. Their comedy <laughs> movies are priceless. But I think Miller's Crossing stands out as their best serious movie. I'm not a big fan of No Country for Old Men. I do love the cinematography and performances, but the story really lets me down. But this story with Miller's Crossing does not let down. It's kind of got this 30s mafia vibe and focuses on this really strong protagonist and Gable Byrne pulls this off really well. Plus Barry Sonnenfeld does the cinematography and he really captures the 30s. And the whole thing just kind of just looks like something they've never done before. And I do find it one of their priceless pieces of art because 
with with normally that my attitude with the, with their movies is just turn off your brain and have a good time. But with Miller's Crossing, you really have to appreciate it for what it is, and that's why it's my number five. So my number five is Miller's Crossing. Awesome. My dogs are going crazy over here, so I was uh, muted that. But uh, yeah, this is one I really want to see. That's their third uh, movie that came out. Um, the 16th was you and Lou and Davis. I just wanted to bring that up. Um, but uh, yeah, this is one I'm really looking forward to seeing. This is one that you say I for sure should see. And um, yeah, I'll be doing it for Cody's page. And I'm looking forward to it. And everything that, that you're saying there is like stuff that I would love, like uh, Neo Noir gangster film is always is always fun, so I'm excited to check that out. Do it. Um, just because I like to do. Um, the budget for Inside Lou and Davis is 11 million. It only made 33 million. That's a small, small movie. I'm sure Miller's Crossing didn't do too too fare too much better. Um, uh, budget was 10 to 14, box office was 5 million, yikes. So they don't do movies just for, to make money, they do it for the no. love of the game. Exactly, exactly, and that's why I respect them as filmmakers. Yes. All right. <clears throat> well, my number four is definitely just for the love of the game. Um... Uh, this movie is one of their most recent ones. Um, it came out a few years ago. Uh, it's actually the last movie that they've done. And it came out on Netflix in 2018. Uh, and it's an anthology film. And it's called The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. And the reason why it's my number four is because that first little short <laughs> with Buster Scruggs was... <laughs> the best part of the movie and uh, you know they're the, the next one with um with uh, james franco was fun and i think each one kind of got worse but i just love the ballad of buster scrubs the first part i re-watched it after it was i didn't even go to the second one i just re-watched the first one because i laughed my ass off i enjoyed the music i enjoyed um uh, uh, the guy who played uh, Buster Scruggs, Tim Blake Nelson, he's just so freaking funny and just so perfect in the role. Because normally, you don't look at him and you go, oh yeah, he's a cowboy. But the stuff that he does in this movie is very cowboy, and boy, did I enjoy it. Um, this is, yeah, the anthology series. Um, also has James Franco in it, Stephen Root, who we talked about um, a bunch recently. Um, but uh, yeah, they're each one. Each one's so unique and, and interesting. Um, also, uh, Liam Neeson's in the third one with the guy with the no arms and no. Uh, no oh, the legs. Black Harry Potter. He's really good in that. Exactly. Yeah, and he's been in uh, the, the Devil all the time. Like he's 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 coming around now. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just really interesting. And the last one uh, is you know the horse carriage ride, and it's like. Are they going to yeah. hell? Or are they, is this their death, you know? And I just thought the way that they s say stuff without saying stuff was really well done and definitely very, very dialogue heavy. Um, so uh, I just really enjoyed these actors. Um, I enjoyed this anthology. And um, yeah, it's really unique the way that they did this movie. But that first, first short, with with the Tim Blake Nelson's phenomenal, and that's the, the number one reason why my number four is the Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Nice, nice. That is actually on this list, and I'm going to get to it in a little bit. But my number four also stars Tim Blake Nelson, and it's also the first out of four movies they've done with Mr. George Clooney, and it's Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? This is a this is their spin on the Odyssey, but set in the Great Depression, and boy, is it so so much fun. And it's probably one of their funniest and really makes them stand out as comedy directors, in my opinion. Did you have John Turturro and John Goodman, who are always great in their movies, and they really add a lot of their style with these performances. And you can just like tell that everybody who worked on this film had a lot of fun with it. And that's the reason why it's my number four. I think this is definitely one of their standout hits. Yeah, um, also a, a song that was on the radio. I am a man of 
uh, uh, and that's just ha- movies that can have a great song that transcends into like the today's radio is, is I love that. I think it's just so definitely, interesting. Definitely. Um, and this is not their first time and it's not their last time. So I, I think they're just really, really smart and they know how to, you know, transcend genres and in, in, in entertainment world. Uh, so yeah, good pick. Uh, that one, uh, that one would probably be number six, really close. Um, but that is their uh, eighth film. So yeah, they did pretty well. Okay, ready for my bronze? Yes. What's your bronze, then, Justin? This movie I didn't see until I was, uh, you know, an adult. Hadn't seen it um, probably like three or four years ago. Um, We had watched it. We did like a movie film club for my work. And this was the movie, one of the movies that I had chosen. And I really, really enjoyed it. Um, It had missed me. Also starring John Turturro. And this is a movie I think I recommended to you. Came out in 1991. Also starring uh, Mr. John Goodman, and uh, this movie is called The Barton Fink. Good choice, um, good choice. You did recommend it me. Yes, and it's just about uh, a playwright who who's in his hotel and he's trying to write this this script, and he has his neighbor John Goodman, who's you know kind of um, a buffoon, kind of a you know the neighbor very you don't really want to have next door. Very definitely that weirdest movie. <laughs> yes. Uh, very, very weird, but also like, I just felt uncomfortable in this movie, which is good. I think that was the, what they were going for. And then yeah. also with, with John Goodman's character and, and Barton Fink, like they're sweating in this movie and it's just, you can feel like they were just in the, in this world and, uh, they made us feel in this world. But I really, really love John Turturro's performance in this. John Goodman is also really good. He does his, his he does his part as, you know, the, the neighbor that you don't want. Um, but yeah, this movie is nominated for, for three Oscars and I think it deserved it for a supporting, um, a role for Michael Lerner and then costume design and then art direction. So, uh, which is totally true. The production and design, the art direction on that is really, really well done, uh, to have it seem like it's this I sort of, I uh, think this was the first film Sir Roger Deakins did the cinematography for as well. Oh, Wow. 1991 huh awesome yeah Yeah, this is just a a movie that i just really enjoyed on the first viewing and it just it stuck with me and it definitely is um you know very it's not it's not too too crazy wordy like a lot of their movies but it's all about performance and i think john turturro and john goodman really give great performances in this movie and of course michael learner because he got the nomination but uh yeah steve buscemi's in this movie um and yeah I enjoyed it. My number three, Barton Fink. Great number three. And now I'm going to bounce off your number four with my number three, and that's the Ballad of Busker Strokes. You're right. The first story has you laughing all the way. And the first three stories are fantastic. I do think the last two stories do kind of get weaker as the film goes along. But as a film overall, I kind of really enjoy it because it's trying to be different from their previous work and i think as a collection of short stories it works really really well so you have like kind of like their home hitters like tim blake nelson and other actors they've starred in the past just needed jeff bridges and i think i think it would have been a perfect movie (laughs) yeah um I forgot about that fourth one. The fourth one is like oregon trail sort of styling that was i thought that was the weakest yeah, it, it was, but that ending to that one was really powerful, which is why yeah, I think it, it was in there. But, um, yeah, good choice, obviously. I'm, I'm happy that that's in your top five as well. And for it to go straight to Netflix and just still be, you know, really good. And, and I, think, it was a- I think they were the first, like, big directors to make a film for Netflix, and I think that is an achievement on its own. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because it kind of it kind of really revolutionized their style and why we love the Cohen brothers. Totally. Yeah. They they brought back some of their stylings and, and saw it gave us a new styling as well. <clears throat> All right. 
Right, what's your runner up? My runner up. Um, this is probably their most classic movie. And it is only as good as the two main actors in this movie. And they are a couple, and all they want to do is just have a baby. And they get the baby that they uh, that they want, but I don't know if it's theirs. And it's called Raising Arizona. Raising Arizona. That would have been my that would have been my number six. Nineteen eighty-seven. It's 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 just Nicolas Cage and Holly Hunter seeming to have such a good time, and and the chemistry between the two of them is so damn good. I mean they. I believe this is like the movie where ever, they just want all Coen brothers to kind of be this way, you know, yes, sure. um, dialogue heavy, performance heavy. Uh, I mean, we, you know, so, so good. This, screenplay, definitely one of their best written movies. Yes. Um, we also have uh, John Goodman in this movie, of course, because it's a Coen brothers movie. Francis McDormand's in this. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's just, it's just fun. It's just, I mean, you don't really want anybody to to steal anything especially a baby that's not theirs but yeah it's just a ex-con and an ex-cop decide to help themselves to one of a, another family's quintuplets and then they go on this journey and it's more complicated than they thought tons and tons of fun i mean nicholas cage this is kind of where we saw him become nicholas cage <laughs> i think i was very impressed with his performance in this movie actually yeah, yeah, yeah. He, you can tell that he's given it his all. I mean, he, he, he loves, he loves what he does. Um, uh, no nominations. I just feel like he's better when he works for big directors like the Coen Brothers. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he's doing whatever he can just to make any sort of money. But um, well, yeah, I've heard I, things about the pig film. But oh yeah, pig's good. Um, but uh, no, this is a fun movie. I think this is one that everyone just really knows. You know, this one and Fargo uh, and, and um, The Big Lebowski, I think, are the three, like, hits that everyone loves. And uh, yeah. this is, out of those three, this is my favorite. And I'm putting it as my number two, Raising Arizona. This one also has great rewatchability to it, which nice. not a lot of Coen brothers do. Nice, nice. I'm looking forward to watching it on a second watch. So you ready for right. my number two? Oh yes. My number two is probably their funniest movie to date. I cannot imagine how funny this movie is. It's set in the nineties. Follows a dumb idiot. He gets his name mistaken with a billionaire and has this, an accident. He gets thrown into this uh, journey journey to to get revenge on his wet rug. Jeff Bridges, John Goodman. The Big Lebowski. And I prefer this movie more for John Goodman because he plays the angry best friend perfectly. And that scene where he's smashing up the car is just priceless. John Goodman steals the show. He should have got an Oscar nomination for that performance. And as for Jeff Bridges, it really, really, really elevated his career and really showed how much of a comedy actor he is. He is just naturally funny. And I think that's why I prefer him in comedy roles more than serious. And this role really shows his comedic talent. And let's not forget we get to see Julianne Moore naked again, just like we do in Boogie Nights. And we also get to see Steve Buscemi, uh Flea, uh who else isn't Philip Seymour Hoffman. It's just an overall legendary cast, a legendary film, really good humor. And let's not forget Sam Elliott, because who doesn't love Sam Elliott? But yeah. Big Lebowski, Priceless, their funniest movie to date, and that's why it's my number two. Yeah, I don't know why it didn't stick with me as much as it did with everybody else. Um, it's it's fun. I think I think, I'd, I think I see your point because it, the ending does fall flat. The ending yeah. feels like nobody's learned anything, and it just ends right there. But that's what I like about it. I just kind of like how you see a day in the life of this dude. Yeah, yeah, I, it is fun. You know, I just, I guess I, I watched it as an adult, and I think, um, you know, maybe if I would have watched it as a kid and enjoyed it a little bit more, maybe I would have liked it. But I don't know. I just didn't enjoy it. My, the funniest part though is when he tries to flick the cigarette out of the window and it's rolled up, and that kills me. 
Um, but yeah, I, I know this is like, again, the one that most people talk about. It's, it is a lot of fun. It's, a, yeah, probably the top movie and most talked about. It has such a huge cult following. Yesterday I was on a shoot and we were at a Buffalo exchange, which is like a, um, you, you can ex like put your, you, you bring your clothes in, you know, and, and they resell it for you and you can like buy other people's clothes and stuff. And there was a book on there and it's like, where is dude? And like, where's Waldo? And there was these two uh, influencers that were holding the book and they're like, what's dude? They had no idea what the dude was or anything about it. And it just made me so sad. <laughs> like, you got, how do you not know the dude? He's like one of the most iconic characters in, in, in movie uh, history, which is true. So um, I thought that was interesting. But uh, yeah, a uh, huge, huge movie. Definitely one that, um, yeah, it's still talked about today. And so and John Goodman should have got nominated for an Oscar. Yeah, the budget on that one's 15 million, box office 46.7 million. Um, also, you know, John Turturro did like a, a sequel to this? Yeah, yeah, but the Cowans weren't involved in it, and I heard it no. off badly. Yeah, the like Rolling Jesus or something like that. Yeah. Didn't, didn't, uh, he, was, didn't... he was much better as a gag character. Right. Yeah. Definitely better as a gag character, just like he is in the movie. Yeah. His character's fun. He is fun. <clears throat> okay. So what is your favorite film by Joel and Ethan Cohen then? All right. Well, they're really good at introducing us to good actors. And this movie, they definitely did that. Um, but they also had three powerhouse actors in this movie. Already been brought up as Jeff Bridges. But we also have Matt Damon and Josh Brolin. And the actor that they created as a star is Hailey Steinfeld. Love and her. this is the remake from the John Wayne movie. This movie came out in 2010 and it's called True Grit. Excellent choice. Would have been my seventh. It is so good. A Western amongst all Westerns. Uh, I have not seen the John Wayne version. So Neither I don't have... Neither have I. I don't have anything to go or base this off of, but what I do know is that when this movie came out, I watched it in theaters, and then I went back and watched it again. I just really, really enjoyed the performances in this. Such a fun movie. One of my favorites of that year, for sure. Um, yeah, and I love Matt Damon. I was a, like one of the hugest Matt Damon fans at that time, um, so it was a must for me. But, uh, yeah, this uh, this was just a, a really good Western, something, you know, that we as a kid, uh, you know, you see him, John Wayne, you see Clint Eastwood, now you get this one, and it just really, really worked. Uh, the budget was $38 million and it grossed $252 million. I wonder if that's one of their biggest. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, um, it's uh, the guy that we just talked about. What's his, I'm blanking on his name. Uh, Jeff Bridges. It's Jeff Bridges, and he's this, you know, this is, Drunk, drunken bubbling cowboy and he does it so well that's his he perfect, does. He does. perfect niche is that because he also does it in kingsman the golden circle as well and it's it's uh, but this time he has uh he has uh something over his eye you know um josh brolin's so good in this matt damon is is really really good maybe a little he bit misplaced uh, amongst the other characters but i still really enjoyed his performance plus Haley steinfeld is the star in this movie. She is, she is so, so good. I like um, this her in movie, the Bumblebee movie as well. Yeah, yeah. She's really good. Edge of 17 as well is also really good. I'm pitch perfect. But, she's good in that too. Yes, she has a very good voice. I like her her uh, single that she had out. Um, but this movie was nominated for 10 Oscars. Picture, leading role, actress, uh, directing, screenplay, cinematography, also Roger Deakins. Nice. Sound mixing, sound editing, and art direction, and it deserved all the nominations. Unfortunately, didn't win anything, but it totally deserved all of it, and it's definitely one of the reasons why it's my number one, but it's just a damn good film, and then also a damn good Western. True Grit, um, again, I haven't seen, remakes are hard to do, to do good, you know, and I, I haven't seen the first one, but I know that I love this one, and it did really well, so my number one is True Grit. Excellent choice, excellent choice. No, I love Trigger. It really got me into the Western uh, genre. Good, yeah. That's yeah. a good and genre. To and I wanted into. to watch it because of Joel and Ethan Cohen as well, so I'm glad I did. 
Okay. What's your number one? My number one is a little movie that came out in 1996. In my opinion, should have won Best Picture. In my opinion, one of the greatest movies ever made. Fargo. Why do you love it so much? Well, it's got a really, really brilliant three-act structure. The first, the first act is the crime and what actually happened. And then you're introduced to the main character in the second half. And you love this character. Frances McDormand really, really pulls off this character. Wow, she's a down-to-earth woman. She's having a baby and she's got a loving husband. Not many films really show the dynamic of marriage couples, but... I think Fargo gets it realistically because obviously Joel and Francis are married, so I think they probably tried to copy their marriage with the writing. And yeah, I like how she's brought into this crime and she's got to get justice. And William H. Macy is a shit in this film. Steve Buscemi probably probably gives off one of his best performances film-wise. Peter Stormer is really, really scary and creepy, but also dumb at the same time. That's what I love about his character. The, far, the the scenery is very impressive, and that score is just so eerie that it really creates this really dark universe. Plus, you're always laughing at every single scene, especially when the woman's getting kidnapped and she jumps out the shower and falls down the stairs. Like you, it's so funny that scene is. And let's not forget every time they go yeah, because that's just hilarious. Yeah, Fargo is one of the greatest movies ever made, and that's why it's my favourite Coen Brothers movie. So my number one is Fargo. Yeah, and uh, you have the wood chipper in there, the famous, infamous wood chipper. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is a, definitely a, a fun movie. I, again, these these ones that are the, the bigger ones, I just don't they don't hit me as much as as others. Um, it it definitely be in my top ten though. This is. This is definitely a good film, but it it spawned a whole series now. Have you watched any of that? I tried watching like two episodes, but I was like, no, 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 Joel and Ethan Cohen, no Francis McDormand. This is not Fargo. Yeah, yeah. Um, It is probably my favorite Francis McDormand performance. Uh, I think she's so good in this. And then also to play three billboards, so. Yeah. uh, to play a pregnant lady and then have and then do all the stuff that she was doing in this movie is pretty remarkable. You know, it's definitely something that is is you, you got to come up, you know, commemorate her for that because she's running around with an extra 25 pounds. And, um, and, and she, has her, her she has a lovely husband. She has a lovely husband, doesn't she? Yeah. Well, yeah. William H. Macy is so freaking good. And then it just oh, like he, sits, he was he was a right shit in it. Uh, but yeah, nominated, it got seven nominations, um, Best Picture, Director, winning two for Best Actress and Best Original Screenplay. Well-deserved ones as well. Yes, and that was her first of her now four, which is yes. the most for any female in the Oscars history. Nice, I'm glad it's her out of everybody in the world. Yeah, well, I wish it was Meryl, but that's okay. She'll Meryl's, have her dumb, dumb. Well, hopefully she might get a nomination for Don't Look Up. It looks promising. Yeah, do you think Frances is going to get one for the tragedy of Macbeth? I hope she does. I hope she does. I wonder if it's going to be a uh, supporting role or if she's the main role. Yeah, I don't know why. I just have a feeling Gargoyle's going to win the Oscar for House of Gucci. Well, my my vote right now is uh, is Jessica Chastain for Eyes of Tammy Faye, and I, I also hope the the little girl or the young woman in Coda who plays uh, who plays the the young girl who can who can um, who's not deaf or mute. Um, I thought she did a really really good job, and I hope she gets nominated. And then her mom, who's who always plays uh, deaf and mute in in movies, was so good. I hope she gets supporting actress. So. Nice, nice. Uh, All right, show cool. run these down. Let's do it. My number five is Inside Lewin Davis. My number five is Miller's Crossing. I have The Ballad of Buster Scruggs coming in at number four. My number four is Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? My number three of the bronze is Barden Fink. My number three is The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. 
My number two is Raising Arizona. My number two is The Big Lebowski. My number one is True Grit. And my number one is Fargo. Yeah. Fargo, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I, awesome. And I do apologise to any Coen Brothers lovers that No Country for Old Men is not on our list. No, sorry. And I'm not sorry for that, actually. But I am sorry for Fargo not being on there and Big Lebowski. I know those are huge, huge films. Oh, I can let, but I did I have can let you offer them, too. Just, I can let you offer them, too. Them to yeah, but I did, I did have Raising Arizona in there, so that's hopefully people can uh, forgive me for the others. But I think overall, both of our lists are pretty freaking solid because the Coen brothers have really, really solid films. So, yeah, they do. They do. What would be your least favorite of the ones you've seen? Probably Hail Caesar. I know, I just feel like they didn't do it as well as Quentin Tarantino did it for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, um, yeah, Intolerable Cruelty is a little interesting, too. Kind of, it's a yeah. rom- rom-com. You don't really see that from the Coen brothers. No, no, I think the rom-com was a bad idea for them. I've not seen Lady Killers, but I've heard that's terrible. <laughs> well, it's Tom Hanks. Come on, come on. Uh, yeah, um, I highly recommend the series Man of the Ones that I've I seen. I want to see that. I want to see that one. Yeah. And then I need a hit. I haven't seen Blood Simple, Miller's Crossing, or The Hudsucker's Proxy. So I need, I to, need see to watch those. Blood Simple and Hudsucker's Proxy as well. All right. Great list. Great list. What's Great. next time? I haven't thought about it yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, we still we still have some banked up. So uh, um, we'll be back next next week. To, to to do a recording but um yeah great um any any recommendations or oh, recommendation uh, uh if, do you have one i recommended shang chi last week okay yeah um well belfast i saw belfast kenneth Branagh's belfast um it's so funny that he had a movie that was released while he's tr- in the middle of releasing the death on the nile like he made a movie and released it before this other movie that he made is going to be released, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, Belfast is a black and white film. It's um, totally through the eyes of the child. Uh, it's a really, really interesting film. The production design is so well done. Very, It reminded me a lot of like Parasite, meaning like their town was built. Um, and uh, yeah, actually the lead, the mother in that movie uh, is so, so good. Um I haven't seen her in anything, but um, apparently she, she was in the Ford versus Ferrari movie. Oh, uh, 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 Kaitriana Balfi. Yeah, yeah, uh, she was phenomenal. One of my favorite performances this year. Yeah, she's in Ford v Ferrari. She's in Outlander, the TV show. Uh, Money Monster. An escape plan. Okay. Uh, but yeah, Kenneth Branagh is definitely going to get some nominations for this film. Um, you know, production design, screenplay. The kid is so, so good. Uh, I just, it was really interesting. This sort of soft um, movie, you know, about war and about uh, family. It, they had interesting, he had, he picked interesting music choices. So the movie made me feel one way and then the music made me feel another. So my emotions were all over the place. And I don't, I don't, I don't feel good about it. So it's not a perfect movie to me, but I thought it was really, really, really well done. And definitely going to be up for some Oscars. So go check out Belfast. Oh, well, I will. That doesn't come out in my country till February. So I will check that out then. No, that's too far. I know, I know. And the fact it's the British director directing this movie, we're not having it till February. Makes no sense. It doesn't. It doesn't. All right. Well, this was fun. Love talking directors. Huh? <laughs> um, we'll have to do a Spielberg one one day. Oh, we will. We will do a Spielberg one one day. To West Side Stories coming out. Yes. Ooh, good, good. Yeah, maybe we should do that next then. Oh, we will. We'll do that one next. Spielberg. Okay, let, let's do it next. Lots to talk about in that one. Finally, my favorite director we get to talk about.
Yeah, well, Nolan's not bringing out a film for another two years, so we have plenty of time for that one. Didn't we already... Do we do a, a Nolan list? I don't think we have. I don't think we have either. Okay, interesting. All right, cool. Well, then, uh, thanks for having me, as always, Rob. Follow me at Worth the View Movies and all the things. Lots of content always coming out. Uh, I've been posting like five, six times a week, which is pretty good, so... Um, I hope everyone's enjoying the content. I just got a message from a, a viewer saying they enjoyed it, so I always love hearing that. Um, but yeah, you're at Rob, Robbie's Reviews 94. Yes, that's my Twitter name, uh, Robbie's Reviews.co.uk. And if you want me on TikTok, it's Robbie's First Time Takes. I've not done TikTok videos in a while, but I'd take me in to do them again. Yes, and yeah, maybe we'll get one uh, about a movie that you're seeing later today. Oh, King Richard, yes. Yes, you probably yeah. That's one of my highly anticipated ones, so I cannot wait to see that this weekend. And uh, yeah, also Ghostbusters Afterlife. Which I'm seeing on Thursday. Beautiful. Cool. All right, Rob. Until next time, have fun. See you later, Justin. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.